Hey guys, it's Chris with Poometry, and today is video two of my temperature and humidity series. In this video, I'm gonna explore how environmental factors affect the general table conditions that we play on. First up, I shot the length of the table and recorded the maximum number of rails and the distance the ball would travel. Take a guess beforehand. Which conditions here might result in maximum ball travel, or might they be the same? It's harder than you think to get a perfectly straight rebound pattern, as well as minimize ball hop from the rail, but these reflect the typical max length for each condition. Hot and dry made it almost to the fifth rail. Cold and dry gets to four. And then really it's the question how far off that fourth rail. Cold and dry is about four and a half rails. Cold and wet. You can see it slowing down about four and a half rails. And then finally hot and wet. This one almost makes the fifth rail. And here's all four shots together hot conditions continue to run further and the two cold conditions ran short. Second, I tested the tendency of a hard hit ball to actually have rail reversal where it's sort of going off one rail into another rail and then you have this sort of rail and ball induced spin and throw that sort of changes the direction from bouncing this way to back the other way. Now it's possible to do this with English or cutting the ball, but my goal here was to produce rail induced English with simply a full ball hit on the object ball and a hard hit. Hot and dry, you see it stun off that second rail and almost becomes straight. Cold and dry stuns as well, but never really straightens out. Cold and wet does about the same. It looks more stunned off that second rail, but it still continues. But look at this, in hot and wet conditions, the rail induced spin really sends it for a, a loop off that last rail. Watch them here all together. Since the trend in the first video was that tables with the same humidity react similarly, I was surprised that the trend here for a second time was temperature related. Both cold conditions resulted in a more natural rail action, but the hot conditions ran shorter and even reversed direction. In my third test, I imagined what would happen if you blended a maximum power shot with a maximum rail shot. And that led me to, naturally, the seven rail kick in the corner shot that some of you know. I note in my shot charts that this shot can be very finicky, and I hope this test will reveal some information as to why. In the hot and dry conditions, it has a pretty good angle at the end, but it just doesn't have the legs to make it all the way. In the cold and dry conditions, watch it just keep running. It feels like it should be slowing down, but it just it has this like little engine that could sort of motor and pockets the ball. Cold and wet, you're gonna see it run an angle much closer to that second diamond. It really runs short, as well does hot and wet. We see that action running short again, like the Eddie Taylor shot in the first video. The wet table results in a short hit in here the hot condition actually runs short. Here's all four of them together. You can see them in a similar pattern and only one of the conditions actually is able to pocket the ball. What baffles me is that the dry shots, which ran shorter in the max rails test, seem to carry more speed in this test. Also, you need to check this out. Watch the end of the cold and dry pattern react off the final rail. The arrow shown is a straight line from rail to rail, but it swerves at the end to actually get to the rail and make the hit. It is clearly reacting to some sort of sideways torque and spin on the ball. Finally, I wanted to test if there was any significant difference in the ability to jump the ball in various conditions. So I made this jump height marker chart, which actually is inches. I'm not sure it actually correlates to inches from the camera's view because of the angle, but it is a way to mark the height relative to other jump balls. Will any of these conditions produce a higher jump ball that's typical on average compared to the others? Or maybe do you think that all of these conditions will produce about the same ability to jump a ball? My max jump for hot and wet cleared the number seven marker. My max jump for cold and wet cleared the number seven marker. 
My max jump for cold and dry cleared the number 7 marker. My max jump for hot and dry cleared the number 7 marker. This test was hard on their capture in precisely the same way because I had to dismount the camera each time, but it was pretty clear that whatever fancy theory someone might have about jumping conditions, it doesn't matter. In summary, we have a lot of evidence that temperature and humidity can really affect the trajectory of a bank shot, and we're gonna explore that in more detail in the next video. However, we have also explored other things like a jump shot, and we have seen that in general, don't worry whether it's hot or humid or cold and dry, a jump shot is a jump shot.